This video is a review of physics, a minimalistic review of physics as we need before embarking ourselves in a journey of the study of electric machines, in particular rotating electric machines. Take a minute, take 10 if you need, but go ahead, read and meditate about moment of inertia. There is a good article about it on Wikipedia. Renew your acquaintance with Newton's second law of dynamic. Refresh your memory about the relationship between displacement, velocity, and acceleration and their units, meters, meters per second, and meters per square second. In a word, review your physics. We begin our review with Newton's second law of dynamics when we apply a force to a body with a mass of m kilograms. We know that what happens is that an acceleration appears, an acceleration that is proportional to the force we apply and is inversely proportional to the mass of the body. That is, the larger the mass, the less the acceleration that is created by that force. Large masses imply greater inertia, we know that. Let's review now the concept of angular mass, also known as moment of inertia. A moment of inertia is, in rotational dynamics, the same thing that mass is in linear dynamics. It is a measure of the resistance of the body to changes in its rotational state, that is, to changes of its angular velocity. The symbols used by physicists for angular mass or moment of inertia are I or J, but I is electric current for us, and J is current density. The question is, why didn't they use one of the many Greek letters, perhaps, or even a Klingon letter? Oh well, it's easier to use one of the Latin letters, all right? So we will use J. J will be the symbol we will use for moment of inertia. If we apply a torque to a body with a certain moment of inertia, J, an angular acceleration appears According to this, this expression is Newton's second law of dynamics applied to rotational motion. We apply a torque in Newton meters to a body with an angular mass of j and an acceleration alpha in radians per square seconds appear. Let's review now the concepts of mechanical power. We remember that work or energy is produced by a force F that is applied to a body that moves a distance D in the direction of the force. Force in Newtons, distance traveled in meters, gives us energy in joules. If we divide both sides of this expression by time, energy divided by time is power and distance divided by time is velocity, we get this interesting expression. A force applied to a body that is moving in the direction of the force with a velocity v in meters per second is delivering a power p or watts. Force in newtons, velocity in meters per second, and power in watts. Now, in rotational motion, the work or energy is applied by a torque. The body rotates a certain angle in radians and an energy is delivered in joules. If we divide by time both sides, what we get is power on the left-hand side and torque multiplied by angular velocity on the right-hand side. A torque delivers a mechanical power P proportional to the angular velocity of rotation of the body. The torque is given in newtons per meter, the angular velocity in radians per second, and of course the power comes out in watts. Let's review now the forces in electric machines. Lorentz law. But Lorentz law we will call that rather Bill's law. But not with two L's, but with only one L. Bill's law, like that, and let's see why. A wire, a conductor, carries a current, I, and a length, L, of that conductor is inside a magnetic flux. A magnetic flux that has a flux density, B, like that. What's going to happen is that the magnetic flux will apply a lateral force 
on the conductor, we say the force is proportional to the flux density B, to the current in the conductor I, and to the length of the conductor immersed in the magnetic field flux. But you and I remember there was a fourth factor, this one, the sine of a certain angle. What angle was that? Or the angle between the current and the magnetic field. That's correct. That was the complete expression for that force applied by the magnetic field on the conductor that was carrying a current. However, by designing electric machines, that angle is always 90 degrees. The sine is 1, and the expression is simplified in electric machines to just F equal B I L. And now you know why I use the mnemonic of Bill's force. B in Teslas, in Weber's per square meters, of course, the current is given in amps, the length of the conductor in meters, and the force in newtons. What is the direction of that force? Imagine flux lines as if they were rubber bands. There is a magnetic flux field, and inside, perpendicular to the screen, there is this conductor. The conductor carries a current, so that current will try to establish a field of its own with that direction. If the current is entering the screen, then the direction of the flux that that current tries to create is this one. That would increase the flux density on the right and decrease the flux density on the left. The resulting flux would look something like this. If we imagine the magnetic flux lines as rubber bands, we say these three stretched bands will try to straighten and push the conductor to the left, like so. And the value of the force is the Bill force, of course.